Driving your car is probably the most dangerous activity most of you do. Across the world, about 1.3 million people are killed out on the road every year. That would be about 25 people in the 10 minutes or so of this talk. In the U.S. alone, there were about 40,000 motor vehicle fatalities. In 2017, it's almost certain you know someone who's been seriously injured or lost their life out on the road. I do. Now compare that to this amazing statistic. Over the last 10 years, seven billion—that's 7,000 million people—have boarded domestic U.S. airline flights. And there's been just one fatality. Now you may be thinking about the 737 Max crashes in 2018 and 2019, but despite these two tragic events, the statistics for airline safety globally remaining remains incredibly high. When you consider that 11 million people board flights across the world every day, so. On the one hand, we have an everyday activity that's relatively dangerous, driving, and on the other, a seemingly dangerous activity. You know, traveling 500 miles an hour, 35,000 feet above the ground in a metal tube, that is in fact exceptionally safe. To me, this raises an important question: Can we learn from one and apply to the other? Could airline Safety principles, aviation safety principles, help us all be safer out on the road. I think the answer is yes. I develop and sell parts for aircraft, and this job has given me exposure to aviation safety principles, and also involves a fair amount of driving. Now, I know I'm not alone in hoping that new technologies such as autonomous vehicles will help us all be safer in the future. But I'd like to consider something we could take from aviation that could keep us all safe now. Today, I'd like to suggest three key attitudes, mental approaches used by pilots and crew that we could all take on when we're behind the wheel. The first would be positive paranoia. Now I remember reading this quote: "Pilots with an untarnished safety record are quick to point out that a healthy dose of skepticism and paranoia has kept them safe throughout the years." Pilots with a good safety record aren't overconfident, and they don't take shortcuts with safety checks, thankfully. And some would call this positive paranoia. Positive paranoia is not the kind that cripples us with anxiety and indecision, but the kind that makes us ask the essential "what-if" question: What if that car suddenly switched lanes in front of me? What if I had a tire blowout now? What if? And asking ourselves the "what-if" question switches us on to. Adjusting our speed and awareness to those what-ifs,、uh, managing the vehicle space around us, or changing our road position. Driving is a routine that many of us do without much thought. And in common with pilots, our greatest ever-present enemy, if you like, our ever-present enemy, is complacency. To defeat it, I think we need some positive. Paranoia. The second attitude: create a culture of constructive criticism. On the 28th of December 1978, a DC-8 airliner crashed in the suburbs of Portland, Oregon. The weather was good, the crew were highly experienced, and there was no major fault with the aircraft. The highly respected captain was seriously injured, but survived. The cockpit voice recording 
showed that the captain had become fixated on solving what he thought was a problem with the landing gear, and he kept the aircraft in holding pattern until it eventually ran out of fuel and crashed. The investigation afterwards showed that, in fact, the landing gear had deployed correctly. Significantly, the voice recording shed light on something else. They showed that if the first officer and the flight engineer had challenged the captain more strongly and asserted their opinions that he was wrong about the landing gear, the accident might well have been prevented. Now, we all know how hard it can be to challenge the boss, <laughs> and it's even harder in cultures with higher deference levels towards seniors. But the, this investigation report afterwards. Made two important recommendations. Firstly, captains must create the culture where、uh, challenge is welcomed, and crews must have the assertiveness to speak up. And this culture of、uh, open communication is now called crew resource management, and it's almost certainly made huge contributions to the airline safety levels. We have today. So the third attitude: understand that mistakes can be friends. 2017 was an exceptionally safe year in terms of airline travel, but it was very close to becoming one of the worst in recent history. In July of that year, a flight was making its approach into San Francisco at night. The lights the crew fixed on were, in fact, the lights of four airliners on the taxiway waiting for takeoff. The crew realized at the last moment, aborted the landing, and missed the second aircraft on the taxiway by just 14 feet, a fraction of a second. It was a spectacular near miss. A thousand people had been in danger of serious injury or death. But thankfully, the aviation industry learns from its mistakes, whether they be crashes or near misses like this one, where a, a failure in landing safety systems had confused the crew. The industry always investigates what caused the incident, how to stop it happening again. And then tells everyone about what's been found. Think about the last time you had a near miss. Now, I'm not suggesting you write a detailed investigation report, but I am suggesting a near miss is something of real value, not only to reflect on ourselves, but to share with those around us, and not just in company safety meetings, although that's good. But maybe one for the family meal table, or when catching up with friends over a drink. Sharing our mistakes in this way, in a blame-free way, gets us learning from one another and thinking about our driving. So, in that spirit, here's one of my near misses I'd like to share with you. Early in my career, working for a different company, I had a serious near miss that's always stayed with me. Driving into the office one morning on a two-lane highway, about 60 miles an hour, I was feeling particularly tired, struggling to keep my eyes open. You probably know the feeling. And then, as I started to drift, a sudden thud from the front side of the car brought me straight back to attention, and I realised, to my horror, I'd hit a cyclist. I stopped. Certain he must have been hurt. Amazingly, he was okay, just angry. <laughs> But at that speed, it was inches from a near fatality. Thankfully, the wing mirror of my car had hit his bike, deflected, and、um, and avoided knocking him off. I was pretty shaken up though, <laughs> and I ended up telling my boss just to get it off my chest. I can't remember his advice, but sharing it made me realise that driving while tired was a particular risk area for me, and that's helped me to manage it 
carefully over the years. Learning from our mistakes is essential to improvement in many areas of our lives. So, why not be intentional about it in our most risk-filled activity? I'd even suggest that near-miss learning principles could be included in driving instruction or license renewal. So, cultivate some positive paranoia. Encourage those around you to challenge you, and share your mistakes. It could make you a better pilot of your car, but most of all, it could save your life. Thank you.